And we are live. Hello, everyone. This is Ninja DC joining in for another podcast discussion. And this time, the Thanksgiving special. But joining me again is, by random Skype order, uh, Carlos. Hello, hello. This has been your um, favorite little uh, aquatic no. dragonoid, um, Gunmetal. <laughs> I'm just here, just letting you know. I've come to realize a lot of stuff about myself. And um, yeah, I'm just feeling a lot more calmer than before so hurry me Yay. find out more at 11. Yeah. all right next up second day hi there this is second day the second opinion and day lover and from a critic first and a fan second let's talk baby day lover eating food nom 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 Mm -hmm. oh, we worked good. late. We had to get her food on the way home. What can I say? Hey, nothing wrong with that. Then next up, Jen. I may be first. I may be last. Gobble, gobble. But I am first and always, Jen. All right. Does anyone want to go first with what you've been up to? I'll I'll go because it'll be real quick. Yeah. I I am get. I, without getting too too personal, have been getting a crash course in how to be how to be a functioning adult and a caretaker. Yeah, and and also, wait, what? Where, where am I? What? Where? Oh my gosh, too much has gone on, and I have no idea where I am or what's happening. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I forgot. And if there's if anyone is the praying sort. There, I'm, I may even get more. There may be even more adulting adventures, adventures for me in the in the fact that I may have to try and cook a Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, and uh, fair warning, if if you ever if you hear about an idiot who burned down our house, you'll know it's me. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so yeah, so okay. yeah, pray. So yeah, if you're the praying sort, pray for me. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, second day, you want to go up? Well, for one, we've been, uh, let's see, I've uh, been landing more gigs. I'm hitting my stride as a Tai Chi teacher in old folks' homes. Ooh. And I am not even kidding. Like, okay, you teach Tai Chi. Like, there is a, it's a pretty specific market. But, yeah, like, the younger people who um, want to learn it, it's like they Basically, they're curious. They come by to see the philosophy and stuff. And I don't know, I guess some of them are like, you know, movements and stuff. Well, that's like diet yoga and they fail. And yeah, nobody comes to Tai Chi to learn to fight anymore because it takes no effort to yeah look up a Tai Chi video of some old guy in pajamas, a master, as it were fighting some MMA fighter as a test and getting knocked out in 10 seconds. And <laughs> on this, I have thoughts, but maybe I should spare you that. <laughs> but yeah, so a lot of times you get people who will take a couple lessons from you and then go. And really, since then, what might have been helping me is like, yeah, retail and stuff. I've been soaking up experience on how to use this, yeah, permanent salesman voice of mine as a blessing instead of a curse having conversations with people and it seems like it fits pretty well in like delivering this stuff in old folks homes where they actually need it where and uh honestly it's more satisfying to teach and i'm not even kidding it's like they kind of treat you like a little bit of a rock star if you're able to you know help them feel a little better and give them something they're going to use there in the uh yeah caretakers are like yes you have the floor please tell us more like they'll filter it and listen along with you and stuff. And it is kind of fun. And nice. I'm not even like, yeah, people always write off the elderly in their corner of the world. But I mean, it actually feels kind of like you're helping people. So nice. cool. <laughs> Yay. Our day lover here has uh, been working and yeah. trying to get better at driving. Yeah, all that immigrating over here. Now we're getting to the driver's license parts, the American driver's license. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hope, need... scared, I hope we haven't scared. I hope we haven't scared her with our previous. No, talk no, or... I've I've been through worse. Okay. Not... Yeah, so too. living out in the country, we had like 
I'll I'll tell you about the reckless drivers. Oh, oh. Well, like I'm, I think I told you some of those stories. If you ever want to hear some of those stories, I can. But for the, for all the that, horror stories, yeah. each one of us probably has. I think Deliver has all of us yeah. combined beat. Yep. Ah. Hmm. With that, so that's not going to. Stop. No. No. And um, yeah. oh, I'm full time now in my job. Cool. Which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm trying desperately to make time for seeing friends and uh, making artwork too, but... <laughs> my okay. favorite thing you did, Dale ever made a little something to put the candy in for Halloween. Oh. A uh, treasure chest, by which I mean a mimic. All the trick-or-treaters open this all-brown treasure chest to see a nice pink and white mouth full of eyes and teeth and a, a tongue oh. and a mouth to reach into to get the candy. Are those the ones, oh, are those the ones with that in like uh, Baldur's Gate 3 or like the D&D or whatever where yeah, D &D, it's, yeah. it's, it's a treasure chest and you open it and you come close to it and it's actually a monster? Yes. Exactly. Nice. And the best thing about this was that I texturized the tongue and I put the bubble plast in the mouth so it was feeling weird. When you put your hand in there. Oh. Yeah, we had some kids who like didn't uh, like even want to reach it. One was the bravest one was reaching in first very slowly, very like, yeah, okay, I'm not sure about what I'm feeling right now. And then I uh, one now, of them, now you like, gotta make it Sorry. one of them like like tapped her on the shoulder like really quick to make her jump and then at the same time and I only intended to like be kidding, I just like Moved the mouth down and went like, ah, blah, 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 but she jumped at me. <laughs> <laughs> now, Looking now true. the next thing is like to make it make it kind of an animatronic like, ah, like thing that actually jumps out at kids. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> Boy, maybe we could. Yeah, it was um, and then yeah. Plus, I liked what you also did. She built herself a wolf skull mask with Ooh. sort of a yeah like gothic pretty day of the dead sort of design oh. but yeah it fit down over her whole head yes. and like she saw through the mouth with the jaws going up and down cool and uh yeah these uh three older boys with this uh girl who may or may not have been with them like she was keeping pace but she was on the other side of the street so i don't know if she yeah. knew them but yeah these three older boys they come down they see her and they see me as the snazzy devil with a pitchfork and a <laughs> hat and a cape and my flashiest blue dress clothes. And yeah, so I'm assuming it was mainly Day Lover's fault. But yeah, the boy looks up and goes, nah, they scare me. And <laughs> walks right by her. And that, made me Success. Me of you. that was the teenagers. Yes. Mm -hmm. No way. Oh, like, and then the girl came up and took the candy from us. Mm -hmm. I was like, ah, the bravest of them all. Mm -hmm. And we let her nice. take a good handful. The bravest of them all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. They never does have pictures. <laughs> all right. So it was a fun Halloween. You know, and I threw together a uh, Halloween playlist. And let me oh. tell you, if you think there are a lot of Halloween songs, uh, you're right and you're wrong at the same time. There, uh, yeah. there are the six you know. And then there's uh, the yeah, 30, 40, 50 you can find if you scrounge every corner of the internet and your memory and movie soundtracks and whatever else ah. as hard as you flipping can. So that's the mimic, how it looked inside. Uh, oh. Second just sent a picture. Oh, yeah, yeah. let me take a look. But, let me uh, take a look, see, y'all. Oh, that's was, great! The one I was excited to do, though. Looks um, interesting. Yeah. That's great. The lover's wolf skull mask, which we have an mm -hmm. angle here where you see most of her face. But, uh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, as Halloween songs go, though, the one I was actually most excited to play, like, yeah, see how people reacted to, which is odd because I hated oh, this show, but it's the one from Billy and Mandy with the meteor. Mm hmm. Oh, that's brains, good. Brains, brains, I will fly. I'll eat the brains till the zombified. Sure, they might think it's deranged, but they won't give it a thought after I've eaten their brains. Brains, brains, it's okay. It's not a matter if it isn't gray. And if at first they think it's strange, they won't think twice if they don't have a brain. That's a, oh, that's a good one. 
That's a really good one. Like what? Well, like here's I want to put this to the group. Like what's everybody's like go to Halloween songs song or songs? <laughs> like I would say the 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 one from Friday the Thirteenth. Oh, like the. <laughs> I think oh, there's the, no topping the Halloween soundtrack for oh, the, Halloween. Oh, the was it wasn't oh, yeah. that? Wait, that's that's yeah. Jason, isn't it? Yeah, that's Jason, Jason, and then Michael, of course, is. No, I don't like Michael. Oh, I love oh, Michael. Oh, Freddy's yes. like Freddy's is harder to remember, which I can't. But every time you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, it's oh it's on um, that sort of like strings, sort of like or no that like keyboard riff that like up high in the minor key and yeah yeah mm-hmm. but uh, like it's it's good but again there is no topping michael oh, or, um, the... oh yeah oh yeah the, the michael myers theme from uh halloween mm-hmm. yeah oh, or yeah. the um, or the red queen uh, from the uh, resident evil yeah. oh, that's good. Oh, gator dc i expect you to be able to name at least a couple of halloween songs there are a couple well-known ones yeah. Mm-hmm. No. I mean, yeah, I'm not, sorry. I just recognize not like obviously stuff like Thriller and like. Um, oh yeah. I always feel what? like somebody's, somebody's watching, watching me. me. That's actually that's actually uh, Rockwell. Yeah, that's not Michael Jackson's song. Yeah. It's but just he the does, feature. Yeah. But he does sing on it. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Although you can tell why. Uh, yeah, everybody just decides it's Michael Jackson's song. Rockwell is the guy going, I'm just an average man. Yeah, I live an average, average life. life. But I just can't help the feeling that, like, and all that stuff. Comes. Oh, yeah, I, and then, like, like, yeah, he just sings, yeah, Michael Jackson just sings the chorus. He just sings the chorus, honestly. Yeah, Michael sings the chorus and Rockwell sings the verses, but the verses are like mm-hmm. talk singing almost. You want a little bit of fun trivia with that song? <laughs> sure. Uh, did you know Rockwell is actually Rockwell is actually the son of the founder of Motown, Barry Gordy, and that's how he got, and that is how he got Mike, who also in turn discovered the Jackson Five, hence uh, why Michael Jackson got so big, and then and the Jacksons pretty much as a whole got so big. So all he had to do was to be like, Dad, be like, Dad, I want, I want Michael Jackson to sing on my, to sing on my song or something like that, and he's like, Okay, Michael. fine, I'll just call him up. <laughs> Yeah, well, didn't, like, Rockwell and Michael know each other ahead of time? Like, it wasn't just, hey, by the way, I have a good-for-nothing son. It was, like, they had a bit of a relationship for the fact that... You know what? That part, I don't... That part, I don't know. That part, I don't know. But I know that he had, obviously, the connection, where the connection came from. Uh I just don't know what the relation, what the relation was, honestly. Yeah. And that, I think, was, like, Rockwell's only hit. It was. He had a bit of a career after that as like a guy who makes more albums, but you know, nothing becomes a serious hit anymore. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he. Well, that's exactly but, what it sounds like. But even though I still maintain that's a classic, though. It really is. It's still. Oh, yeah. It's. It's just about. I want to say. You know what? It's not. Well, I don't want to say it's just as much of a classic as Thriller because of how the success. Okay, because of the success. But then again. The crazy thing is, even though Thriller had the su- has the success it has, Rockwell Rockwell's has a different kind of success. But so it's in the running to be almost in the same vein as Thriller. But I think, yeah, but I mean, I think like, all, it's all because you have Michael Jackson singing on both of those. So yeah, I mean they're both classics. Just the thing about saying that uh, okay, something is just <clears throat> as good or like just as big as thriller is yeah and not have like music critics viably bat you down until you can't fight back anymore yeah you have to be talking about probably one of like 25 songs it's like thriller was big oh huge i probably like i think it's sometimes if not considered michael's magnum opus as a song then at least as a Mm -hmm. music video now totally totally i mean Absolute in all the aspects, honestly, the production, the production, the music, the video, just just everything, you know. Uh huh. So true. But yeah, as far as uh, other Halloween songs, are like, yeah, I personally like. Uh, I happily threw a couple of Nightmare Before Christmas songs in there. Oh, 
Classic. The first one, of course, and then Oogie Boogies. And I threw the Devil's Song in from Cuphead. I am, ah. like, if somebody asked me that question that went around online, who is your favorite devil who is the devil and has come to do the devil's work, I might just have to answer the Cuphead Devil. <laughs> like, that rubber hose 1920s jazz style. He is uh-huh. slick, and he knows how to strike. Are you talking... Uh... More the show or more the game? Um, in my case, the show. I'm, I'm sure he's good in the game, too. But yeah, like his devil's song in the show. In case you ain't heard, I'm the devil. I'm a real low down, not on the level. They call me old scratch, Mr. S the big D. I'm the king of the underworld. Yeah, it's great to be me. Totally, totally, totally. To- like, it, I mean... I don't know. You could snap your fingers along with the devil's totally. song. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Ninja? The thing is, uh, I was going to say, um, with the, like the devil from my like, cuphead, like what I really liked about him, like I described him, like he reminded me a lot of Dr. Nefarious from uh, Ratchet and Clank, where like he's a very competent villain, but also oh. like stupid. <laughs> like he's yeah. like he's a kind of villain that like is very dangerous and threatening, but at the same time will slip on a banana pill. Yeah. yeah, there are things he's stupid. He's like Sokka, even if he's technically good at what he does in a lot of ways. There are things he's stupid about that will often get to him. Right. Yeah, I like the sweater. Yeah. Right. Or the fact that like he's uh, summoning his finest demons and yeah, explaining Cuphead to them and getting so passionately into his monologue about how Fire. obnoxiously uh, hateable Cuphead is that he accidentally flares up and activates his flare powers that destroys all of his demons. <laughs> Get me the second finest demons! <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then after finest. he does it again, he's like, so the third finest, these are my finest demons? Well, uh, yeah, boss, now they are. Uh, <laughs> a cyclops with an eye patch, a uh, balloon monster that can only shoot large volumes of fire that just destroyed the biggest one left, a uh, <laughs> scorpion thing that's just sort of a scorpion. As much as I would love to incinerate every one of you, I cannot even begin to imagine the fourth finest demons. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I forget, are they supposed to have a new season of that or not? Um, last I heard, no, but last I heard right. was a while ago. All right. Okay. Netflix, Netflix had like this three season thing it stuck to, which was unfortunate, but maybe not final. I didn't even know Cuphead was a show. I know it was a game, but I didn't know it was a show. Yeah, on Netflix. Jen has not watched Cuphead. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, people debate how good the uh, Cuphead show is, but... No, Jen needs to watch it. It's, it's like, right off the I didn't know it was a show! I didn't know they actually made a freaking Mm. show out of it! I do recommend watching it. Yeah, Yeah, I think, like, there's... You need to watch it. It is totally worth it. And if you like Cuphead's animation in the game, you will like how they use it in the show. Okay, you can put that in more critical role, okay? Oh my gosh! How? Why am I just hearing about this now? Where, where the heck have I been? I know. Okay, I know yeah, where I've been, but I don't know where I've been. <laughs> uh, I will say, like, not every episode is on fire. There's like right. some slice of life that aren't, but as a whole, like, it's a great show and one of the best Netflix animated shows. Oh my gosh! I need to track this. I'm gonna have to track this down because I did not know this was a Cuphead was actually a show. Mm-hmm. Wow! I need mm-hmm. to see it. Then mm-hmm. I know it's a game. I just didn't know it was a show. I remember seeing gameplay of it, uh, uh, gameplay of it, and be like, "Oh my gosh, this reminds me of the old Bosco cartoons that are sheesh older than I am." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so while well, they decided oh. to bring that animation back, because like that whole animation and heck, so much of that whole era, there was an atmosphere to it that was a oh, very totally. look and feel, and Cuphead was so smart to totally. harness that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's one thing I, I, absolutely. I thought, wow, who does that? And who does that? And like they actually and they just captured it so expertly. It's like I was it's like it took me back in time and like, but this is a video game. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah that's one thing like uh, Facebook videos or just those random videos like it's gone 
where you show me so many classic animations. Um, it's just like, oh yeah, that, that era did have a style to it where it was just like it extremely did. imaginative. And yet, and the funny thing is, if you were to, to if you did, well, if you could try to do all that now, makes you wonder how much of it would fly. Um, boy, I don't know. I mean, like, boy, I'm sure we could debate like what actual restrictions are these days a lot, but I mean, um, it'd be so much fun if, they, if there's so much. I feel like there could be so much stuff you could get away with. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, I mean, Cuphead does exactly that. It gets away with a few things. Oh, yay. <laughs> Come to think of it, the 20s did, too, like, what it was when it was okay with letting a character, like, meet on unsightly demise or something like that. Yeah, it so. was okay for them. Yeah, it was okay for them after, like, cartoon, cartoon violence, cartoon mm -hmm. violence was funny cartoon mm -hmm. violence was slapstick funny and also you could get away with seeing like i don't know a the characters on there do something like drink or smoke mm -hmm. or bash somebody on the head with like, a, with a some hammer of them had literally blood in there um that's actually one thing it reminds me like, like, yeah, like some of Jerry that actually reminds me of like one thing i find surprising in retrospective is like the Halloween specials of the Simpsons, like some of those were damn violent <laughs> for like mainstream television is like, we're looking back like, wow, there is a lot of gore and like this decapitations in this mm -hmm. like public television just because they're like, Oh, it's animated. It's fine. Yeah. I'm actually yeah. wondering that one with the, uh, the cannibalism episode, the teachers are eating all the students. If uh, that, that was what was up with the ending of that. Like it was a clever work around with like, <laughs> um, oh, it was all a dream. They're not eating the students. No, there's nothing to worry about but that fog out there that turns you inside out. <laughs> like, like, see, everybody, we're not just copping out. There's a fog that turns you inside out. We totally just didn't pivot to that because the fact that they're still perfectly alive and dancing around just with inside out designs. Yeah, that's totally not <laughs> easy to slip by the sensors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And if somebody tried somebody tried to <laughs> be like how dumb <laughs> yeah then i remember the one episode where like uh bart and lisa basically went to exchange school to hell and bart became like a teacher's pet <laughs> well, that was perfect for bart it's, it's too it's too perfect for bart did, end, did, did that end up being a fever dream of like homer simpson and he wakes up and and he, and he wakes up and all of a sudden he walks down all happy and everything. He walks downstairs and he sees Bart down there and he's like, don't! <laughs> it was the one where Homer went to hell because Ned was the devil. Yeah, that was one <laughs> more. <laughs> I knew Ned. I knew there was something wrong with Ned. I knew it's the last person you'd expect. It's all, hey, neighborino. <laughs> Yeah. I knew something was wrong with him. Homer or putting him down there is not a good idea because he's just eating all of the donuts. He doesn't care. No. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was like um, Homer. He successfully got Homer to sell his soul for a donut, and oh, even Homer easy. actually managing to outsmart him at first is undone because he yeah sleepwalks in the middle of the night and eats the rest of the donut, but uh. <laughs> yeah, so Marge manages to get him a trial, but not before he has to spend the whole day in hell in the division of ironic punishments. So, you like donuts? Yeah. Well, here, have all the donuts in the world. <laughs> and like a crane. But then Homer, and then Homer would be like, woohoo! And Homer is, yeah, eating them at a good pace. But then we cut to uh, later when almost all of the donuts are gone. And Homer's <laughs> still eating them at a good pace. And the guy's like, I can't believe it. He blew through my whole stash in a few hours. <laughs> the best thing is Homer is going like, num, 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 more. Yeah. Num, 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 more. Yeah, he's like, up. Oh, because, like, he's shoving them into his mouth. Right. And like, for every uh, exact beat. So it's going like, up, 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 more. Up, up, up. And he's like, th and, uh, and he's like, this is not what I had planned. Um, yeah, exactly. Or like, 
one where Homer just gets chopped up into little pieces, the worst of which go to be on, go to become hot dog meat. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow! And then they go that far. I mean, brutal. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. It sounds about some about right in some ways, mm. but uh. True. True. But brutal. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, in the next shot, Homer's back together again. So I guess that was just a brief punishment. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> so um, I guess um, I could probably let you guys know what I was doing recently. Um, so um, I kind of went and uh, purchased a certain thing from Shark Robot for a uh, hell of a boss, actually. Oh. I decided to get a bit of a glow in the dark uh, hoodie of Beelzebub. From yeah. Hell of a Boss? Yes. Was he in the recent episode? She. she. Yeah, they made she. Beelzebub she. a she. 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 Was she in the recent episode? No. She was in the season one finale that came out in season two because they messed up copyright and had to skip it for a while. Oh, gosh. Oh, okay. Need to look her up. <laughs> uh, it's, just, uh, it's Vortex's girlfriend. Yeah. Oh. Uh, voiced by a certain uh, person you might have known. She, she was in the season one finale, right? Yes. Why do I not remember her? Well, I'll have to look her up anyway. So, <laughs> oh, where is where is my brain? What well, that is the question. Okay. Anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like I basically got like the hoodie, and it it, it was quite very stylish, and I took it to, uh, over to like watch the theaters one Wednesday night for a certain film that we're going to be discussing a bit later on. Uh-huh. And um, just honestly, I'm like, going to say to you, um, aside from that, um, aside from like that specific movie, another franchise decided to take an ending uh, around this week or last week, basically. That being Attack on Titan is over mm-hmm. in the anime. Oh my gosh, I just saw, I just looked up who Beelzebub is, and I could just literally slap my, slap myself in the head and just slam my, my head against the wall, because that's, she's the one who sings the cotton candy song. Exactly. <laughs> it just, wow. Wow, I cannot. <laughs> Dang, you remember, you remember how obsessed we were over that song, right? Uh, <laughs> Um, honestly, right now I might be obsessed with a new song. God, mm, I'm sorry. Yes, Bob. I'm sorry. I'm addicted to two minutes notice now. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just too much now. Like I never thought I would say this, but his Aroli is now literally my favorite character in Hell of a Boss. <laughs> He's the throne B. He's the throne everyone else. They are making him pretty likable. Uh, yeah. It, like, legitimately, I don't care if he's not showing up for the rest of the season. He already did what he needed to do. Boom. I don't need to see any more of him until season three. <laughs> like, like, legitimately. He basically got, like, an entire hour of content for himself and his hubby. I mean, uh, yes, but it does seem like they're building up, like, a greater plot happening with his, uh, important uh, lover. Mm-hmm. Well, indeed, well, indeed, like, that's why I'm saying, like, I don't need any more content right now. Like, what we already got already was enough for me to be like, okay, I am justified in saying, like, Fizzaroli is my favorite character. Didn't think I would resonate with him so much, but here we are now. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's like stuff like that that makes you really think about, like, certain stuff like, huh. When he was like really sucking up to everything, he was really repressing like parts about himself as an imp because imps are usually deprived from like uh wrath, aka Satan. Huh. But like when he finally did his big number, it's like, okay, now there's a spiteful wrath I come to see from imps. 
<laughs> it was the most beautiful song ever. Like the song that felt like it liberated me from like a, a sense of like restrictions I had for myself about language. It's like, geez. Oh. Like I didn't think I didn't think I was like I was gonna be like okay with it, but it's like took like it took hell of a boss two and a half years to like finally break me. I'm like, well, this character finally made me like uh, feel comfortable about it. Well, there you go. So Jen, you haven't caught up with the recent episode? No, I have not. I, I haven't seen the recent one yet. I've been so busy. I haven't. I've been so busy, and I haven't been able to. But I know I need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, when I, the, and the fact that I forgot about Queen B, Beelzebub, and that. Oh. <laughs> when I forgot about that single obsessive song that she sang. Mm-hmm. And now it's back in my head again. Great. Mm-hmm. And I cannot believe oh. I forgot about it. It's like, how dare. It's like the universe is like, how dare you forget? Mm-hmm. It will now play in your head forever. 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 So, um, <laughs> I guess I should bring up while we're still in like a even a little bit of an after Halloween mood. Uh, one thing I have been up to is watching that YouTube show Goose Drunks. I don't think it's popular enough for everybody to have heard of it, but like, what the hell, Jenny Nicholson was on it once. Uh, what? Yeah, the, um, whatever she calls herself, the YouTuber, she uh, reads a Goosebumps book and makes a drinking game out of it. You have to drink every time something spooky happens, and you have to drink every time something stupid happens. So a lot. So yeah, as you'd expect, there's a lot of drinking. And any of you guys saw Ghostbumps when you were younger? Heard of it, never I read it or saw it. Oh, you gotta uh, watch that too. <laughs> I've watched I've watched the series. Yeah, that Goosebumps was sort of our generation's five nine. Yeah. Five yeah, nine yeah nine like days. it was I mean, it was like I might have been just a half step behind. I mean, like the first Goosebumps book came out when I was two. And then when I was seven, like you could walk down the aisle of, yeah, a grocery store that sold things besides food and see them like plastered all over a wall. And I mean, honestly, like I was the kind of seven year old who was worried that they were going to be too scary for me. So I let my mom get me one, the haunted mask well i'm like okay it's just a mask so it can't be that scary right and right don't actually know but the haunted mask has a viable argument to being the best goosebumps book yeah oh, say it's, it's at the very least arguably one of the most scary ones it's honestly yeah. one of the most important ones considering the fact that they dedicate three episodes of the series for that book alone wow and here, here. even two more episodes for its sequel yeah, That's like, um, I mean, like, well, the reason the haunted mask is scary is because, like, it, re- it, like, gets under your skin a little bit with what it's telling you is happening. Like, the, uh, like, the stuff that might have bothered, like, little kid me, like, okay, there is a monster, and it has eaten people before, and it is coming to eat you. Like, that's not so much what the haunted mask is about. Ooh. Yeah. No, it's about like the first initial thoughts of like you losing your identity to like some monstrous utter self, being someone you're not, not appreciating what you are now. Like Maybe losing, you want to be like someone pretty better. much losing your losing your identity, losing your mm. identity. Yeah. Lose your face, lose your name, then get fitted to a two tongue flame. Yeah. Um. Well, the thing about hey. It is kind of that theme. I actually, I well, I, despite being half a generation late, decided around the fourth grade or the fifth grade that I did want to read them all. I made a stab at it. I didn't actually, I like, somewhere in the <laughs> 50s, there were 62, 64, something like that. Uh, yeah, somewhere in the early 50s, I finally trailed off. It was like, oh. all right, it's the sixth or seventh grade now. I'm getting a little old for this. But uh, the only one I have is the Swamp Wolf, but I read all of them. Yeah, the um, Wolf but Swamp. um, I will say yeah. the Haunted Mask Two was as a book, it was not nearly as good. It's like 
the the plot of like okay yeah you wished yourself away you put on this mask and you yeah, decided you were gonna scare everybody and now yeah your um identity is leaving you and you your personality is changing and uh a voice you don't recognize is now yours and all that instead it's like mm. okay one of the one of the friends slash bullies from the first book decides he wants to pay somebody back with a creepy mask and uh it's from the same guy and it's an old man mask so the problem is that he starts to feel old and he's tired Aww. and he's old mm. and that's the book being scary he's old and he's trying to maybe scare some people he's trying to maybe yep yeah, go somewhere where he could solve this problem, but he can't really do it, at least on his own, because he's old. So he has to right. go get the help from the girl from the first book. But, uh, Interesting. I mean, uh, I think, like, the Goosebumps show, I actually will, I think on a subtle level, like, um, even though some episodes weren't as good because they had a TV budget and they had TV actors and all of the above, it mm -hmm. did have a habit of, like, um, low-key correcting a lot of its counterparts on the writing department mm -hmm. like yeah just various uh tweaks to make something make a little more sense or give something like a payoff that you would finish the book like wait what happened to, with that but so, mm -hmm. so i am open to the fact that it might have improved the haunted mask too um, from what I remember, it was not as good as the original ma uh, Haunted Mask, but it wasn't bad. Hmm. That's just what I remember from that one, with that plot line. Yeah. Well, um, okay. That, um, that gives me hope. Maybe I'll check it out, because, yeah, there were, <laughs> seriously, especially for the later books in the series where R.L. Stein. And I actually relatively recently ended up uh, looking up if there was, like, why this was, if there was anything to it. I didn't realize he was cranking these out at, like, one per month at, wow. the, at the peak of the series. Yeah. Oh, God. And, and it's, I guess, become something of an open secret that, like, technically not confirmed. So, I, I don't know, it could always turn out that he really did just decided he wanted to do all of these himself for reasons that elude me, but the open secret that some of them were ghost written. Oh. And, uh, it's like towards the back half of the series, some of them got really bad. Like I, I saw, like, I think at his weakest, like, um, what were some of the non plots? Uh, a, ki a kid, steals a magic kit from his favorite magician who was rude to him. And uh, the magic is kind of like, say, that doesn't sound very safe. And then his sister eats a magic carrot and turns into a rabbit. And then they go back and it turns out the magician is actually a dummy controlled by a rabbit. And he says, oh, don't worry, the magic carrot will wear off in a couple of hours. And it does. And then he makes the kid his protege tur who turning him into a rabbit hmm. the kid is like yeah i'll be your protege you're my hero great you're a rabbit now <laughs> you are like, a rabbit now yeah it's like i don't know like a handful of good punchlines at the end with that and the rabbit insulting the kids but otherwise it's a total non-story <laughs> and some of them are so like this one like he got so into twist endings like characters keep waking up like oh that last part was actually a dream like it went a little too inception <laughs> and then so... yeah like so um okay so yeah that was pretty rough at times reading some of those and i think that's why um like the series actually originally ended why rl stein and scholastic parted ways and why he started coming forward with like new Goosebumps series and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot that can get painful. And actually, in the Goose Drunks show, I don't think she's read any of those yet. Maybe mm. one. But, uh, yeah. He still, even at his best, was, like, fond of his very uh, interesting choice twist endings. And she is not a good sport about those, which oh. is kind of funny. 
That is the stupidest thing I ever read in my life. <laughs> What's your name? Bailey, something like that. So yeah, watching some of that. Interesting. Mm, yeah. I watch something um, a little different different these days. There's now something a show called The Great Halloween. Uh, if you've heard of the Christmas Light Fight, there's now a Halloween version of it. Bailey Myers, your name. Huh. There's uh, now really? na- there's now houses that go all out for Halloween versus the houses that go all out for Christmas. Mm-hmm. When you're regarding so Halloween decorations versus Christmas decorations, I'm like, yay! There's now a show about that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Really? Um, a personal thing, but it sounds cool. Um, well, um, I was watching like a let's play recently of like uh, one of uh, Code Daka's like newest game projects. You know, the creator behind Danganronpa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was for the one called uh, Master Detective Master Ar- uh, Master Detective Archives Raincoat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I when it when the let's say finally got to the ending, I just literally look at the plot and I go, oh, how come this is that you? Oh my god! I didn't think you would go that hard. <laughs> And then they were like, let's do an alternate ending to Full Metal Alchemist. What? Oh, uh, like, like, and it's not like exactly like Full Metal Alchemist, but let's just say there's some plot elements that are similar to it. Okay. <laughs> like, um, like, I'm just wondering, do any of you have any plans on trying to see anything of this or not? Uh, what's it called again? Uh, raincoat. <clears throat> no, probably not. So, for a mystery game, they decided to have their final chapter shift genres to a horror game with zombies. Oh no. Oh, oh and it gets better because the zombies turn out to be homunculi. Okay, there's okay, there's there's the uh there's the connection. <clears throat> and basically the connection. And basically the ending for the story is like, oh yeah, what would happen if we had homunculi living with humans in the end? Oh my like, god. Legitimately, it's like what if we actually still had greed? God dang it, but the actual people. Like, because, like, the entire town was actually replaced by these homunculi after going crazy and killing their human counterparts. Yeah. Yeah, the story oh, goes in completely insane. Mm. Sounds a bit goosebumps. Or Stephen King. Mm. One of the two. Oh, yeah. And then Similar premises, that... widely different levels of talent writing. Why? Is... Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Kadaka is, like, improving his writing in which he does a plot twist in the story for, like, all the Danganronpa fans involving the blood. Oh, wow. And it's insane what he did. Because if you experience Danganronpa at all, then you would fall for this plot twist. Because it's like... You see, like the you see, like the murder victims for every single case in the story having like pink blood, and it's like, oh, that's, oh, that's just normal. Hey, we get to have more pink blood in in, in more Kadaka games. That's great. That's great. Only for them for it to turn out, um, those aren't people who are dying. What? Oh God, there was actual red blood. Oh God. Everything explodes for the for the player's head. Like, not in this real anymore. I not that he is real. Oh yeah, and also the story literally has like the main character be paired up with a Shinigami, so it's also partly Death Note. Didn't they just make a new Death Note series as well? Um, no. Like, uh, like manga or something like somebody else finds a death uh, note and decides oh, this time they're going to sell it to the country that uh, bids the highest. 
Oh, that was years ago, and that was for like uh, the new Kira, basically, like mm -hmm. M Kira, for like that big one chapter involving uh, President Trump. Jeez. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was that crazy. It was that crazy for like a little special chapter that was like over the length of two chapters, but it was really good reading. <laughs> well, with that. Yeah. Yeah, but so, I guess with that said, um, mm -hmm. uh, what I've been up to, I think I mentioned it before, um, finished uh, Demon School Irma, or welcome to Demon School Irma Kuhn. Uh, I really like the series. It's charming. This feels like a more mid-2000s anime um, instead of like a modern battle shonen. Uh, it's also very, very distinctly influenced by Harry Potter. <laughs> Uh, but uh, besides that, I've also caught up to uh, started watching Love After World Domination, which is basically Power Rangers. Yeah, or uh, a Power Ranger character falls in love with like a villain. <laughs> so, I, I, I love I love Power that. Ranger character, or is it actually Super Sentai? Sentai. Super, super Sentai, Sentai, just Super oh, okay. Sentai parody. Mm -hmm. okay. Like they're based off of like uh, Italian ice creams. Gelatos. <laughs> that is certainly a choice. Uh huh. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And it, okay, it's only two episodes in, but I'm liking it so far. <laughs> um, yeah. And then let me see. Oh, yeah. The, oh, also continuing further along on Spider-Man, so making progress, but it's pretty long, decently long game. Oh, you mean Spider-Man 1 or Spider-Man 2? Two? 2. Okay, okay. Because I've heard some interesting good things about it, which if I actually had a game system, I would have actually went and play it, just because it might have some of my favorite villains of all time in there as main plot figures. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's very different. Like, I'm, I really have completed before offering judgment. Like, they really reconfigured the game where, like, it's a lot more, like, set pieces, like, in the battle and not, like, because the first Spider Man was, like, very open worldy. Even in, like, the main boss battles and all that, it was, like, sort of a, just, like, a souped up regular bat villain. Not a big mm -hmm. set piece fight or anything like that. But this one's, like, no, there you go, full on, like, let's alter the terrain for a bit. And into all of New York level fights. Um, so yeah, they really up those fights. So waiting to see how it goes. Uh, and yeah, I guess move on to the first news thing, which sort of is going back to what Carl has seen, which was the new Digimon movie. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are the champions. Digimon. Digimon. This song is just six words long. Pretty this song much. is just six words long. There's this a part where it sounds me. like David Bowie Ooh. singing, then conquer the digital world. Uh, and into <laughs> digital <laughs> champions, champions who save, save the, the digital, digital world. world. <laughs> <laughs> really. Classic time. I don't know, like, Jesuit Taku made a good point that, like, the Japanese version of that song is very fun and poppy, so you see them, like, that first scene where they're being, like, flung through the air and spinning around and, or flung into the air and spinning around and going into something that's like, um, well, this is fun and poppy, are they going to some kind of wonderland or something, and then you see that, you know, like, that same scene is happening with the, <laughs> Digimon, Digimon, it's like, they're going to die. And it would be ah! awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, like, um, it's Digimon Zero Two, the movie, the beginning. And it's a movie that decides to have, like, a major retcon in it. Like, all the previous other new movies that came out recently. And let me just tell you. The plot for this movie is something that might mess up people who watch Digimon try. 
So <clears throat> get this. Mm -hmm. For ever since Valentine's Day in 2012, there is suddenly a giant big digi egg hanging over on top of a Tokyo Tower. And it just only sends like a text message to like everyone's devices saying like, humans and Digimon are great. Wouldn't it be lovely for, for each human to have a Digimon partner? Hmm. Like it's like giving vibes of like uh, the last uh, the last sequel like a uh, film for like a uh, zero two, like the revenge of the uh, Boromon, if you recall that movie. Anyone? Mm -mm. No. And which the Boromons right. were like yeah, invading movies, yeah. into the human world, like trying oh. to like. Trying like coming out of every single device, and all the Digi Destiny were just wrangling them all together. Mm -hmm. The okay. only Digimon movie I seen was the Digimon movie. So, oh god! Oh god! Oh god! I'm so sorry. I've seen guys. other shows and all that, but not like movies. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Like, well, in retrospect, there's a long stretch where they didn't really have a second movie. Um, look, the thing about the original Digimon movie is it's just spliced up content from three movies. There were movies that were coming out, like, in a few years' time from each other. It just wasn't put out in theaters. So, yeah, that was the thing that was going on with those movies. Uh, like, there's actually, like, uh, before, like, the Digimon Tri movies, there were, like, um, eight movies in total so like all the way up until like a digimon data squad and then like in the middle of that was a digimon x evolution movie which was only with digimon and no humans and was completely cgi Ooh. Mm. yeah that was one of the first things i ever watched as a as a person getting onto youtube for the first time in my life so yeah, that's how old that movie is. Like 2008 levels of old. But um, anywho, for like this movie, this movie decides to have to feature the very first Digidestin, and it's not the and it's not the adult guys from like a Digimon Adventure Try, like in the form of like Maki or like a, not Maki, uh, in the form of like that older woman who was plotting against the kids or or the or the strange teacher dude who was like working at the school and working for the government at the same time guy go no 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 turns out it's like this young kid who's who's just about to turn 20 by the name of louie and showcasing that he got a digimon in the real world before the whole graymon incident happened and that uh, he may have been the cause for Digi Destin to be a thing to begin with. With his partnership with like a little blue Digimon by the name of Ukomon, which looks like a floating Inke that's not upside down or anything like that. And Ukomon. <sighs> How should I describe Ukomon? It's a more empathetic version of Cube for its personality. Like Cube, the uh, the ninth, the nine tail fox, not a tail. No, not Cube. Oh. Cube. Oh, Cube. From Madoka Magica. Okay, never saw that one. So I heard. I know oh, what it is. Never saw it. Never mind. Yeah, I think a uh, yeah the same kind of Sailor Moonish like pretty white smiling cat with a uh, oh the a contract modious... thing yes. the one that says contract yeah yes. a That's... modious operandi and a personality that is uh, horrifying oh yeah I've heard I've heard that it's like oh you think it'd be like a cute shoujo anime but there's actual real death <laughs> mm -hmm. like magical girls getting their heads chomped. Oh, yeah. and then, I, mm -hmm. I the thing is like I have a really vendetta against Madoka Magica. <laughs> like I remember you I telling me that. Yeah. Just, yeah, there's just so plot wise, so many just flaws and 
And I was, it was like I've seen it after the fact and it was spoiled. No, I was seeing it when it was like street, like, simu, like simulcast airing. <laughs> and my my reaction to like the head chomp was like, oh, that happened sooner than I thought. <laughs> like I was like, oh, I thought this would happen by episode six or so. I was like, oh, it's episode three. It's like, oh, that happened sooner than I thought. But yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's like several points where like characters do some stuff that is just so mind numbingly stupid. That like in middle school uh, too. Yeah. Or early high school, I guess. Uh, but yeah, like I'm I have sorry, a I'll vendetta stop. against I'll that. be a little less second opinion, sorry. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> All right. But I, 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 I would like to say when it comes to like sort of dark, eerie, like magic girl shows, Princess Tutu is better. <laughs> mm, I mean, I, I do like Princess Tutu a lot. But like what it does, it definitely takes a story conventions a lot more interesting than Madoka. I mean, if we're not including Rebellion, then with Rebellion, then the conversation turns over to Madoka Magical winning. Mm-hmm. But That's yeah, funny. yeah. So basically, Ukomon grants wishes for Louie. Mm-hmm. Including his very first wish is that he wishes to be friends with everyone in the world and wanting everyone to experience the same enjoyment that he has with Ukomon. So, yeah, it's, um, it also gives you like fairly odd parent vibes because Louis is quite literally a four year old child at the time of 1996 that. He is heavily abused from his single mother while his father is currently in a coma in their home. Yeah. When I first watched the movie, I thought he was like a, like a little bit of like an elementary schooler who whose mother was ignoring him being constantly beaten from like at school. But no, it was just it was just how it was domestic abuse. It was just domestic abuse. Which was even wow. worse. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then was even left out in the cold for like uh, basically peeing on the couch. I'm just like, what? What are we watching? Where did this come from? Where did it all of a sudden just went, well, we're just going Madoka Magical with Fairly Odd Parents now? Wow. Yeah. Like, it didn't, it just keeps on. But then everything suddenly turns happy when Ukomon uh, protects uh, Louie by making the mom act nicer to him. That's odd. Yeah. And then is able to bring back his dad from, like, his comatose state. Weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and also Louis was born on a leap year. So he only really celebrates his birthday every four years, which is like the plot beats for this movie. Oh, wow. I did wonder sometimes what somebody would do if they were born on a leap year, and I had to assume not that. But the movie doesn't agree. The movie doesn't agree. The movie's like, you only celebrate your birthday every four years. Hmm. Especially considering like his background and such. But Shit. yeah. Then, like, uh, these flashbacks would keep on occurring in which, like, Louis would get more and more, <clears throat> more and more, like, uh, intrigue of, like, friends suddenly coming over as soon as, like, uh, he wishes for them to come over. And everyone is just, like, all hypnotized and such. And Louis, and Louis slowly discovers this, like, odd feeling, like, as he turns from, from like, uh, eight and then, like, at 12. He realizes, like, as soon as, like, his mom and his father suddenly fall unconscious, like, right in front of him, all of a sudden, Ukumon suddenly puts tentacles inside of their brains in order to reactivate them. And then they suddenly act, like, as puppets, basically, to say, like, oh, what a new fun adventure are we going to do today, Louie? Oh, I bet we could do something great, like, go outside, play some games, and play some golf. It's like, and then Louie's just... Wrong. Like, Same like, oh. thing we do every night, Louie. Try to try take to over, take the, over world. the world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Like, Louis, even though he's, like, not really old enough to, like, really understand why it's wrong, is, like, lashing out against Ukomon, saying, like, he does not want this anymore. And, like, he, he doesn't understand him. You're not, like, why can't you understand what I want? Like, I didn't want this. You're not making me happy. And then he tried to, like, end his contract with, like, uh, Ukomon by trying to destroy his Digivice with his baseball bat. Wow. Like, slamming it hard against the ground. But then he hits it so hard accidentally that the Digivice flies off from, like, the table and literally gouges his eye out, basically. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. It's dark. Oh, and then Ukomon is like, oh, no, 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 don't worry, I'll fix it. And then gives up his eye to insert inside of Louis's eye socket. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, wow. it sounds like there's a lot to see with this Digimon thing coming up. Yeah, um, no wonder you'd have, you'd have like, uh, 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 I mean, thoughts and feelings yeah. about this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the next immediate moment, Louis is still disparaging against Ukomon for, like, doing this at, for, at him. Like, him freaking out over, like, his new eyeball. And saying, like, you didn't make me happy at all. I am so upset. Why are you doing this? I want my parents back. Not like this. And it's, and then Ukamon is, like, freaking out so much that he melts and dies wow. in front of him. Oh, wow. Yeah, so basically, Louie actually kills his Digimon partner. Oh, like, my God. Well, that's yeah. not as bad as it sounds, right? Because Digimon never die? Uh... Well, or they for him, that. well, for him, like it basically lasts for like the next six years of like, well, next eight years, like he has not been like in contact with Digimon at all. Like, and all this started because, like, as soon as like he sees like Apoclamon, like a, uh, like come in on screen, like a uh, coming into real life, Ukomon basically reveals to him, like, I did this, and he's like, what? You want the friends, right? They're your friends over there. And it's like, wait, so you mean to tell me all the evil Digimon that have been coming to the human world was because of you? Yeah, that's the other retcon. And you would see why a 12-year-old would act out against this wish granter. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Like, and all, yeah, like, just remember, Apocamon is the evolved form of Diaboromon from the, from the Digimon movie. Hmm. So yeah. Not so uh, fun film. Uh, what was I gonna say? Hi. <sighs> no, that's really cool. In other news, did anybody hear the update with the next James Bond movie? No. No, I've heard absolutely nothing about that. Okay, the update was there was no major update. They have they are not even starting to create one right now. They are still conceptualizing when and if it's even a good idea to make another one, what they, what angle they want to go with, how they want to present him, they absolutely do not have any answers right now on how to follow up the Daniel Craig era. Huh, for God, yeah. I thought they were going to follow well, the is, Elba for a while, but never mind. Yeah. I guarantee there will be another James Bond movie, but they're just going to... Oh, eventually. Yeah, um, but I won't be surprised if the video game comes out first, like from the uh, dev devs of the uh, Hitman series. They got like license to do like a James Bond game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. You want? I mean, there are definitely directions they can go, including treading water directions and all of the above. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, but yeah, like, uh, I guess, yeah, part of the question is, all right, how do you update yeah. James Bond, like, continuing forward? Because Daniel Craig was, like, the, uh, like, okay, let's reinvent the classic James Bond. But now that that's over, I guess a part of the question is, well, do you just do that again? Like, okay, let's reinterpret James Bond for the 2020s now that... He was reinterpreted from the aughts to the 2010s. Like, or do you try to go back to a classic James Bond? Do you go back even in an even bigger sense of the word and like really try to uh, 
like get the James Bond out of the books, who is not exactly suave and cool so much as he's just this hot mess of a human being who's like mm -hmm. efficient at what he does, but also kind of a swinish, horrible person. Or at least on some levels, which there's a lot like heck there's a lot of legacy with james bond that makes you ask like questions okay like how do you which fans do you even go about trying to make happy mm. i don't know for what it's worth like i did find that like okay the core pieces of james bond the pop culture figure that like the uh the thrill of what he does, the love of the carnal things, and yes, the finer things, but also just the carnal things, the fighting and the beautiful women. Uh, I mean, like, the one-upsmanship, the fantastical bad guys. I did find that, like, kind of just daydreaming about it, brainstorming, it's, it's not hard to come up with stuff that would be both, like, modern and have those staples at the same time. Like, all you really have to do is turn James Bond loose against the people you want to see him turn loose against at this day and age. Like, I don't know, maybe he hates the wealthy aristocrats. Maybe the re reason his classic drink, the martini shaken and not stirred, is <laughs> wrong. Like, you're supposed to stir and not shake it. Maybe the reason for that is he loves, yeah, jerking their chains, like, showing that he can one-up them and not care about their, yeah superficial rich person standards for how you do stuff maybe he like the thrill at getting a rise out of people maybe he thrills at like one-upping and getting a rise out of bad people the free-flowing so the lack of sex shaming people that's we don't really have a problem with that these days anyway like i don't know i feel like it can be done but like I don't know, it sounds like they just really don't have that spark of inspiration right now. Boy. But James Bond has come back coming off of uh, worse notes than we have him right now. Like the Daniel Craig era, despite the fact that, yeah, he was a bit of an every other movie James Bond, that like yeah. some of his movies were considered not as good or big letdowns even, like... Uh, it seemed like he certainly made a statement with his last one, and he's going to be remembered fondly. And the last one, I mean, even though it was is it did pandemic era numbers, so it wasn't a box office success per, per se. Um, the fact that it blew away, like all the movies released around it, probably says that okay, James Bond is still a viable franchise right now, like compared to the '80s, where uh. Roger Moore, who was, like, who took over for a James Bond that w that he was older than when he took over. Like, yeah, oldest Sean Connery, technically, but that's another story. Yeah, oldest Sean Connery in a Bond movie is younger than youngest Roger Moore in a Bond movie. So the 80s begins with him in his late 50s still playing James Bond and making people, like, Come on, give it up already. And then trying to replace him with a James Bond who whose approach was my, that uh, go back to the books, like I said before, except not lean into the fact that that James Bond is a bit of a horrible person. So it did not work at all. It's like, OK, we took out all of James Bond's like debonair. OK, I'm like a pop culture hero of suaveness and one-upsmanship no i am a gritty experienced secret agent who goes through smoky casinos and quiet streets and uh infiltrates all these dark horrible people but in the movie but it's a movie so i'm still a good person i don't really do anything wrong so what i'm saying is people weren't that interested and it wasn't considered to have worked at all so they tried a second movie that went dark as all hell and they said, get me the hell out of here. And James Bond went away, went away for a while. And that's where Pierce Brosnan came in. Pierce uh -huh. Brosnan brought James Bond back from that. So, uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's going to happen again almost. But certainly James Bond is a very enduring 
character. Very. Like, a lot of, like yeah, very yeah. cross-generational. Honestly. There's a lot of timeless qualities. I honestly hope they do go back to a more fantasy-ish James Bond. Maybe even like a period piece one. Yeah, I can see that. Like, okay, put them back in the Cold War, you know? I, I mean, I could even see remaking some of the old ones. Like, we probably wouldn't mind that now. Enough time might have passed. Although, yeah, I could also see James Bond taking on, like, modern, uh, yeah, um, technical, like, scams of technology or scams of world domination. It's, yeah, there's flexibility with the concept, but fantastical makes it even easier because that is a timeless sort of a language. Yeah, because I was just thinking about, like, the success of Spy X Family, the anime, which is very traditional Bond and inspired. Uh, yeah. yeah. The one Lloyd, thing I will Lloyd, risk, Lloyd, like Lloyd. there are, there is a huge swath of fans. Like you know how, um, because having just binged the Bond series, I've been like following the Bond fandom a little bit, and uh, you know how, like, the Batman Begins era it was like, all right, let's reinvent everything, grittier, tougher, like we aren't those bubble-headed idiots of yesteryear. We are serious. So uh, Daniel Craig, James Bond, Batman Begins, all of that. And then that era sort of passed, and we're like, uh, don't take yourself too seriously again. Yeah, because like I, the thing I like to joke about Casino Royale is like the most advanced thing like tech James Bond uses in that film is a portable defibrillator. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's very true. Honestly, Casino Royale is still my second favorite Bond movie, and granted, the favorite one does have a better gadget than that. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the um, um, the thing about going back around the wheel to lightening up a little bit, uh, the Bond fandom, not so much. The notion, like, the nostalgia for the Roger Moore sort of, all right, let's go into space, let's have henchmen who can't die even when they fall off cliffs. That is much 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 weaker than the uh fans like screaming at the top of their lungs no um justice for uh that bond i just brought up who tried to go back to the books he was actually possibly the best one uh more um smoky casinos and gritty spy stuff that's the james bond the books have never really been done justice except for maybe a couple of times uh yeah, we want we want James Bond portrayed like he quote unquote really is that and yeah, what's what's worse actually, there seems to be still a little bit of Austin Powers self consciousness there. Like they don't want uh, James Bond to be a guy who can be parodied by Doctor Evil and uh, <laughs> yeah, going into space punchlines. So it's interesting because. Yeah, as much as the fantastical is kind of a universal language, it also, at the present point in time, sees poised for some backlash, unless, of course, the movie is, like, slam-bang great. And even then, probably uh, the requisite backlash. But, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what the direction they go with it. It... Yeah, it's hard to really know just because, like, the current leaders of the estate are seem unsure what they want to do with it. Exactly. They <laughs> Besides seem, for make all money. the reasons I said and more, yeah, money is always nice, but they seem very frozen in place. They have no idea where to go yeah. afterwards. Yeah. It's like, do we reinvent them again? or do, Well, okay, I said all that. There's, there's a lot of things to split hairs over. But uh, I guess on other news topics... Um, this one I just sort of read today, which I feel is sort of an update on the Disney box office uh, problems, is, yeah, Captain Marvel is doing very terribly. The so pre-sales are not optimistic. Technically, it hasn't bombed yet, but it's on track, too. Yeah, like, every, like that's what I was just, a video watch discussion. He's like, yeah, it's, pre, it's like Thursday preview shows are like just over 6 million, which is like one of the lowest Marvel films ever and even less than the Flash movie that came out this year. Yeah. It could be face planting, yeah, which, I don't know, you almost wonder, because, like, it's not even, I mean, yeah, some people want it to be 
the CEO's fault. Um, the some people want it to be get woke, go broke's fault. Like everybody has an agenda, but the fact is that we like this whole year, just the blockbuster, the several hundred million dollar blockbuster has just not been a safe bet. Mission Impossible bombed. Uh, Disney's, no, oh no, Disney's Little Mermaid did slightly better than break even, but uh, um, what bombed? Indiana Jones bombed. Uh, um, the Flash well, actually, no, bombed. Like there, are a lot of, there are a lot of successes, just not really Disney besides, I think the one big Disney success was Guardians 3. Uh, um, Guardians of the yeah. Galaxy, uh, Little Mermaid was it was a disappointing success. Nice oxymoron there. And Elemental was a sleeper hit. Yeah, so basically what Disney is probably going to have to take from that is like, Pixar's still good. Probably shouldn't be putting their stuff on Disney Plus anymore. Because we might have been losing money as a result of that. Also, Guardians is probably still working just because people actually like the first two movies. That's probably oh, why it. that succeeded, and it's and James do... Gunn is act... and James yeah. Gunn is a very, very like a very both a talented director, but also like a very like like he's not part of like he's not just a piece in a cog. He is very I mean, so a, uh, a, a unique director. A uh, have his own plan, but yeah, it's not even just Disney. Warner Brothers, I think was bombing oh. more often than not. In fact, Disney might have done a little better than Warner Brothers, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, God. I Warner Brothers did, Warner, did, Warner 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 Brothers did Barbie. Barbie. Right. Oh, that, that's definitely... That's them? Because, yep. like, Barbie is... Has, okay, I'll take your word for it, but yeah, like... Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, like, weird. They both had their one success then, and then they had a lot of, like, boy, that didn't turn out quite how they wanted with well, heck, Disney at least had the sleeper hit. Did Warner Brothers have anything else? Uh, right now, Warner Brothers basically canned another movie right now in the uh -huh. form of Coyote versus Acme. Yeah, I saw just, that. They're trying that tax write-off strategy again. And I'm uh, like, you first did yeah, that to I, Batgirl, now you're doing it to Coyote versus Acme? No, no. Can't. Yeah, and then Oppenheimer, I do believe, counted as a success but yeah it comes across the pattern seems to be that people very much decided they had to pick which movie was good they were going to see which movie was going to actually become a box office success and which ones um, were not and this is yeah, the first looking time at, in a long um, time where i remember it feeling like there was just really only so much will to go to the theaters and spend money there to go around yeah, I'm looking at Warner Brothers releases of the year, and yeah, they've done poorly, but like you can at least somewhat trace the reason why for Warner Brothers, mostly yeah. because they're yeah. being shaken up right now, and also their DC films are at the end of their rope. Um, though I guarantee, I have a very strong feeling that like uh, Aquaman will do very well. Um, I mean, the first one did, but like. So did the first Captain Marvel. I'm like, I'm just at this point where I don't know anymore. It's like, well, the thing is, like, people really do love Je um, Momoa. Um, yeah, and well, I feel I mean, this is also more of an event. There is a big event, maybe sort of too, with like big, from what I've seen in the trailer. So I feel that maybe not as successful as the first one, but I still feel it's going to be pretty profitable. Mm, there's also news that, like, for next year, Marvel's only going to produce one movie because of the writer's strikes, and it's just going to be Deadpool 3. Uh, that might Honestly, actually think, be the uh, right way to go. Yeah, I saw that movies are getting pushed back, and it's like... Yeah, honestly, thank God, just because that's, I feel, the biggest sort of issue. Like, there's a lot of flaws with Disney's approach and Iger's thing, but I think it's just the biggest issue. It's become too much of a machine and not really a creative art form. And they're just pumping out too much material that like it just no one's interested. They're burning everyone out like they're pick with their Pixar films and their Marvel films just because they're just dumping so much content that you just especially Marvel. There's like so much Marvel between like film and like uh, Disney Plus that like it's 
like it would drive or normal people crazy just to try to keep up and like compared to like the old like uh avengers like line going all the way up to end game like it was still relatively easy to keep up with the lv film up to that point Ooh. then it just sort of got crazy i gotcha uh, and it's not even and it's not even just america dealing with that right now Japan is going through a similar thing right now with its anime seasons. You know, like, looking at it, Warner Brothers' most successful movie since the uh, summer of, yeah, blockbusters not doing well after Barbie. I think it's The Meg 2. That might even be their most, their second most successful movie of the year. It made like. It it was one of those um, non-smash hits that still made over double its budget. So, yeah, the kind of thing they're like, well, that didn't hurt at all. We could be happy we made that. And again, but yeah, like May, that's just it. The thing is, like I said, though, like Warner Brothers, you can at least somewhat understand why, just because they're having major shakeups. Um, and a way so, Disney is to the world is having major shakeups, although. Yeah, you're right. The Warner Brothers are more blatantly uh, there to see. Um, and then, though, like I said, I think Universal boomed pretty well this year. Sony, I think, is too. Um, yeah, Universal definitely is doing good this year. Uh, which okay, uh, what is... well, which movie is like? feel like we got like, just a few examples here. I'm trying to see what Sony put out. Spider-Verse is another biggest one they've done. Yeah. That was a good one, yeah. Because I know they've done a lot of things. Oh, and Grand Treason, which I think was a mild success. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, yes, the ones at the top, and, you know, I get, like, part of the pattern there is that they're the ones that spend like have the biggest budgets that they then don't justify like uh, you almost wonder if that's a sustainable um what should we call it a sustainable formula anymore well i mean that's specifically with um disney like they're the most infamous with like spending a lot in their movie films and it's particularly this year, it's like, okay, this could have been profitable if you would have cut this budget in half. Um, sure. Boy. And, like, and part of it seems to be sort of a pride thing, like, especially, like, how they hire, like, Pixar workers. Like, they are, like, look, most of their work is basically all done in, like, L.A. and all that. And where, mm -hmm. like, Sony and even Universal is moving to, like, outsourcing more of their work um, to, like, cheaper regions and, like... I, like Spider Verse was like under 100 million to produce. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great, great movie. Way. Although, yeah, I'm just like, even like despite the fact that I, heck, I used to have a blog series called Cult versus Mainstream, demonstrating that so many like indie cult movies not made for the highest budget could be unequivocally better than mainstream like 100 million budget formula movies, but. You know, it still doesn't exactly fill me with optimism, the thought of the landscape changing. It did kind of feel like we weren't living in a golden age of many things in the 2010s, but we were kind of living in a golden age of uh, um, movies that, like, the studios realizing that, yeah, people wanted these kinds of experiences and starting to get a better sense of what they could do and, yeah, getting a little more daring with their budgets and their ambitions and their yeah creativity and who they hired and their artistic freedom and i mean i'm like Ugh. as much yeah don't frown because it's over smile because it happened and all that but i mean it still has has me kind of like well, have we reached the end of that have uh yeah epic cinematic universes and uh the content that fan bases always wanted to see for decades finally coming to fruition. Is that going to start winding down or, or are we going to see them tweak their approach a little bit and then saying like, okay, no, we're back more of that. No, I think that most people say like the current trend that seems to be working is like just the, the 
event movie, which is sort of like a very big stylized, like unique movie that's coming out. That might be part of a series, but it's like a very small series. Like um, Sonic could even fall into this, um, yeah. Sonic 2. And Barbie, like of Mario was definitely called an event movie. And like Barbie and Oppenheimer are both like a bit big event movie, like that trend. Um, that seems to be the thing over like big franchise, net, like spider web franchises seem to be going on the way out. Yeah, the like cinematic universe, like the cinematic universes, people kind of did what they did to Shrek. Like, okay, well, let's do that, like, in the most surface level of way, because the other people did it, and, yeah, burnt out. And the bummer there is that we didn't actually get that, that many. We got the MCU, we got the DCU trying to copy it, and we got a couple of, like, no, we can have interconnected legacy stuff, we can have Cobra Kai as the follow-up to Karate Kid, and and then... Yeah, like, like the rest were all like failures that were over before they started, like uh, the Universal Monster franchise. Yeah, I think yeah, I do agree. I think the um... oh, I lost my uh... Let's see, I lost my train of thought. Uh... So wait, what were you just mentioning? I know before the monsters, uh, um, legacy sequels like Cobra Kai. Um, oh yeah, that, well, that's what I remembered. Like I was gonna say, yeah, that is. I do agree that even though it has become oversaturated, like I feel like we didn't get enough of the multiverse crossover thing. Like I feel there's really only one big success with that, which is Marvel. The other ones are just sort of okay successes or. Um, I mean, the big crossover ones, not really the sequel years later things like Cobra Kai or um, I forget what the Rocky sequel is. Um, Creed. Creed. Uh, yeah, like more yeah, like, I, uh, contained yeah. like versions that are ambitious in their own right, but not quite so sprawling. Mm. Um, not exactly. But yeah, like I guess kind of. I guess like the only ones to really try it, try it, were kind of the Universal monsters and the uh, um, DCEU one gradually like staggered around a bit and then failed, and one that was over before it started. Yeah, like a thing with the DC is they just picked the wrong person to head it. Same way with sort of Kathleen Kennedy it was like they're they weren't the right person to be in charge of this. Um, yeah. Or Kathleen Kennedy I, picked the wrong person. I feel like, I don't know, the Star Wars franchise might have at least been able to go out with like, you know what, slam bang reception, you know, maybe some fans objected, but they're fan. We, uh, we did our job if J.J. Abrams didn't have like the worst, yeah, ability to improv like the in, they say when you improv when you're in an improv game you always say yes and so like okay ray the twist is there is no twist because yeah somebody doesn't need to be the daughter of somebody incredible to be special you know a, an important person can come from any way screw all this classism jj could have been like okay yes and uh whatever he would say from there to like walk towards whatever he wanted to do with it instead he said no but grandpa zombie palpatine yeah the thing is like i would say is like i feel like yeah there's blame there for the directors but i feel fundamentally like it fell on kathleen just because her entire plan was for the like star wars like pre uh sequel was that like each director is going to bring in their own idea and like change this course of thing, which is fundamentally a stupid thing to do, like a fran like a three three part sequel ending a one of the most important IPs in history. Like, yeah, you should have had a very basic, mm -hmm. at least very basic outline. Like, this is what's going to happen in the first part. This is going to, what's happened in the second part. This is what's going to happen in the third. Directors can change the flair of it. 
but they shouldn't be like this, like because like the jump from like J.J. Uh, Abrams to um, what was the one guy in two? Uh, the eight. Ryan uh, Johnson. Yeah, Ryan Johnson. Like the real, there was such a distinct whiplash there, where it was like clear that they are both going in very different directions, and then the whiplash back when J.J. came trying to undo that. So. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, like, well, I, on one hand, I think the MCU was more that way than people give credit for. Like, there was some, okay, this is still a living, breathing animal with, like, yeah, versatility and where it could go. But it's like, yeah, at very least, I, I guess have a safety net is generally a pretty good plan. So I'll give you that one. And two, if you <sighs> do need to course correct don't do not make the course correction nope bail on the thing that just happened to like so nobody is happy so that like sacrifice this movie's integrity to undo the one that was a success but some people complained about it was like and i mean yeah, and I know I just got done talking about directors there, but I mean, the thing is that the fact that Kathleen at very least okayed that and in all likeliness probably even encouraged it a little, a little like, you know, there had to have been some studio notes like, we want the fans to be happy. Like, that was really not the handling of people who have their their franchise well in hand that yeah, have a full grasp on but, what they're uh, doing. So I guess a more mixed reception from me, but that's still not positive. But uh, I guess moving on to speaking of crossovers, that sort of brings me to like the final news story, which probably is not much of interest for other people in this group, but I still is extremely big news. Is yeah, uh, Six Flags and Cedar Fair has announced they're going to merge, which are. Yeah the two biggest regional like theme parks in the U S Wait, six flags and who Cedar fair Cedar, which fair. yeah, there is a reason they're picking us, even though Cedar flair has a majority of the stock in the merger, they're going with the six flags name because no one knows who Cedar fair is, even though they go to their parks. That's like uh Cedar point, Kings Island, Dorney park, uh, Canada's wonderland, Carowinds, Kings dominion, Knott's Berry Farm. Um, yeah. They they don't brand their logo on everything like um Six Flag does, which is why they're like in the merger, it's like fifty one percent of the stock is going to Six Flag shareholders and forty eight percent point something is going to Six Flag shareholders and then the CEO is going from Cedar Fair and the CFO is from Cedar Fair, then the uh, CEO of Six Flag is going to be like the chairman of the board. Okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. That's, that's, I mean, I guess there's less competition for theme parks because of the whole COVID situation, so it makes sense that something like this would be bound to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, it's sort of also news because, like, Six Flags and also SeaWorld have both tried to buy Cedar Fair in the last five or so years, and they rejected the offer, and this time they agreed of a merger. But, again, I think part of that is that the merger is giving slightly more edge to the uh, Cedar Fair stock, which are run better than Six Flags, which has gone through bankruptcy and near bankruptcy a few different times. Um, I gotcha. Yeah, that's definitely all well and good. Uh, it just sort of like a wondering right now. Um, like, um, how should I put this? Like in like in the sea of like new animes recently. Um, like I just want to let you guys know that like Beyblade in its fifth iteration finally catches up to the technology shown in the original Yu-Gi-Oh series by actually having holograms for their stuff. 
And I'm like, wow, Beyblade, it took you over 20 years to make it to the point of which Yu-Gi-Oh! was already starting out in 1999. Progress. Oh. I'm not even kidding. I'm just like, as soon as I saw the holograms, I'm like, really? Your evolution for this series is just having holograms. Well, Yukio just went in and said, we got that concept on lockdown. Like, dang it. <sighs> like, I don't know. Like, I mean, aside from the fact that, like, um, the new uh, Beyblade series and it's actually been kind of fun with, like, its interesting core cast of characters, including having, like, a prominent female character for, like, one of the main characters, which is not something we would see at all in Beyblade. Like the only ones that would come close is from like um, Metal Fury and then from like the Burst series of uh, like the the original eighth season done by Hasbro. That's really it in terms of like female representation. Like to that large extent. Like I just wanted to bring that up because yeah, I've just been, I just been like trying to figure out what animes to watch from this season because it's like, I don't even know what to call fall 2023 except for the biggest cesspool of nothing but new titles everywhere and every single sequel coming out at the same time. You just can't yeah, find. A... Yeah, you can't find anything. Yeah, there's a lot of sequels, but. The one I currently have my eye on, which I'm waiting to get more episodes in before I jump in, is like Shy. That one seems potentially like one of the better ones of the season. Um, mm. I've all, I've been currently been checking out. I'm in love with the villainess for like a new one, honestly, and that one honestly has a good uh, pitch in which like the main character is actually is still the main character of the Atome game this time. It's just that now she's just trying to derail the game just so she can end up with the villainess instead. So, yeah. And it's it like... It took him long so, enough to reach the Yuri version. Yep. Yep. And it's super cute, like, how she's obviously, like, in love with all the traits of a Sundere with her. And, like, even appreciating, like, all the sense of bullying that she does just because, like, she has, like, this innocent quirk of, like, she never goes too far. And she always does everything herself. Even though she has lackeys, she always wants to do it hand-to-hand personal. It's like, and it gets a weird way immediately. It's like, "Mm, yes, please, more, more. And I'm like, oh, my God. This is what the Shemotions were from the Dragon Ball Z Abridge movie. Get away, everyone. We actually have a masochist in here. A masochist main character. Run! But, yeah. Like, that's been something that actually got my attention recently. It's like, I still have not watched Fear Run yet, because I'm like, yeah... Out of all the newer stuff that come out in the past five years, I'm like, I should actually pay my respects and actually watch this great show. I just don't know when I would be in the right mood to actually sit down and watch through it all. Hmm. Because it's just going to be like an emotionally draining story. That's why I'm not really giddy about watching it, even though I know how great of quality the show is from all the anime reviewers. Yeah, just not in the mood for something that's great on a cut your heart out kind of level. Yeah. Yeah, there are some series I I intentionally just like, okay, I'm not in the mood for this. Uh, Mm -hmm. Well, you want something on a lighter note? Yeah. One of the things pushed back is the uh, live-action Lion King Mufasa prequel. And this is currently going around Twitter uh, attached to... Oh, God. Yeah, it's getting pushed back to a later date. We're not getting it sooner. And it's getting passed around Twitter, accompanied by... uh, Yeah, 
people attaching things to it, such as the Willy Wonka meme, stop, don't come back. <laughs> I I did not want this. I was fine. Yes, speaking, of fine. Of speaking of things that have run their course, yeah, the live action adaptations of like animated features, I feel that's definitely starting to run its course. Um, it was never I much mean, of a course to begin with. I mean, it right could have now, been granted, but they, yeah, through the motions, all of, motions, all of it. Well, I'm not talking about quality. I'm talking about like uh, box office. They were yeah. rather successful, making several, making over a billion. Yeah, they can't even do that anymore. And it's like, okay, what is with all the bombing of uh, stuff we actually wanted? Why can't yeah, the live-action Mufasa prequel already have happened and bombed so hard that they gave up on these? Yeah. Like, oh, like uh, There's also been like recent announcements for like a Yu Yu Hakusho live-action series. And people are saying that that might actually look good from the trailer. It seems like it's faithful, at very least. Mm. Yeah, One Piece has sort of changed people's opinion about it can actually be done decently. Yeah. yeah, and then I have not watched anything for the new Avatar live action yet. Mm-hmm. I really don't know if I should even touch that one. Well, I mean, it can't be any worse than the M. Night Shyamalan one. And I have a uh, feeling they're going to lean into the fact that it's way more... Yeah, Avatar than M. Night Shyamalan was, too, if they're smart. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I just remembered. Um, The sixth season for, like, Dragon Prince is going to come out soon. Interesting. I heard it was not supposed to come out until, like, in 2024. I will say that with the Avatar show, like, I had a... I got into a brief... Not really just debate, but just discussion, like, on... Things that, okay, don't disrespect the material, but are just kind of playing karaoke. It seems like that prompts a few different opinions from, like, what's the point to... Uh, that is exactly how it should be. And, uh... And I guess, like, I'm more... Okay, I, I don't... There is an art to doing it well. If you do it well... I can put up with you like the <clears throat> uh, the Will Smith, the Jaden Smith karate kid. Like, I don't know why people got eh, their underwear on a bundle on. Uh, yeah, like that was trying to replace the original. I'm like, no, it doesn't. This movie. No, it's not. This movie respects the hell out of the original. It's even like keeping some of the littlest details while doing it its own way. Like, it's not as good as the original ones, but I mean, it's like. It blows so many remakes away. Or then, like, if you look at the Nosferatu remake, that's also kind of taking the karaoke approach. Like, Werner Herzog just really wanted to do Nosferatu through its own lens. And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, I mean, granted, these karaoke movies, like, one thing you have to accept is that you're going, the original is always going to be your equal at best and your total eclipse your superior total eclipse your existence uh superior at worst but the nosferatu one is like geez talk about equal that movie is like i mean boy it's like taking it from okay we have nosferatu the greatest silent vampire movie of all time to mm -hmm. now we have a pair of crown jewels like the yeah strikingly darkly beautiful Werner Herzog one and the atmospheric gothic uh yeah expressionist German one weird so I don't know so I think the karaoke thing can be done well but we'll see with the Avatar series because it seems like that's there are whisperings of that as a concern of like, oh, you're just going to play karaoke with the original series. Mm. <laughs> mm. But it seems like, yeah, I have no strong of opinions either way as the current seems to be the current feeling in this chat. Yeah, I, I'm just not really like going out of my way for that stuff. Like, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around uh, 
what is my preferences for this year? Sure. Preferences, like meaning what you want to see or what? Yeah, like, because, like, aside from, like, the Digimon movie, I have not watched, like, any of the other movies, including Spider-Verse. Just not yes. been feeling it. I have not been feeling it. Yeah, I just, I had no time or, um, well, I had money, but not that I was comfortable using right then and there. None to go to the movies when it came out, and I still haven't gotten to it, and I wish I had. I really do. It's, it's just, I just don't know. I just don't know anymore. Like, I just want to, like, figure out like what movies is just going to be enjoyable you know something that I would actually be interested in I was not interested about Mutant Mayhem probably because I was still salty about what happened to Rise of and there was also the thing about like <laughs> Spider-Verse even though I've already watched the first movie should be a no brainer to watch the second one right was mm-hmm. not excited about going for it even after hearing about what happens in the movie I'm just like Still no interest about watching it. And it feels too weird. Like, in fact, I feel more interested about Spider-Man 2, the game, over Spider-Verse, which is odd. Uh, Even though I have no inclination about playing the game at all right now. What is Spider-Man 2, the game, though? Is it a Spider-Verse adaptation or a... No, no. No, it's it's an original... It's original Spider-Man story okay. from Spider-Man 1, Miles Morales, which is sort of a spin-off game, and then Spider-Man 2. Yeah, I did see it's play the like, first yeah. two games based on the Raimi films, and I remember really liking those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, this one is, yeah, it's original story made by Insomniac Game, which is known for... Uh, Ratchet and Clank. Um, okay. So, yeah, the original story and all that, and extremely successful for Sony. I think, like, within the first 11 days, they've sold over 5 million of them. That is pretty cool. And that's uh, probably going to go up a lot more because we're still far from holiday Christmas season. So there's going to be a lot of uh, Christmas tree openings. Mm-hmm. Uh, we already started setting up the trees over here, so yeah. the infection has already started. It's like I dun, dun, dun. But uh, speaking of like overreaching, like uh, this is sort of the topic was going to be uh, Thanksgiving, but probably going to bridge it just because we spent so much time on the news. Mm-hmm. Um, or on Digimon movies at least. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Thanksgiving is going to be a uh, thing. I'm going to yep, enjoy yeah. it because it is that holiday with no strings attached, mostly. Which is actually a rather common sentiment I hear about Thanksgiving. Like it's just a very simple get together family holiday. So, mm. partly because it's so like it unmarketable. Come. It's Christmas without the presents. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's it, kind of that purity to it i mean i mean for me basically i would think of like uh thanksgiving as more of like okay what to do before getting ready for cyber monday slash black friday yeah especially now that i actually have employment stuff that's the key now <laughs> Yeah, I will say, I will say um, I've never really had a good deal on Cyber Monday. <laughs> Everything seems to be like Black Friday-ish, like Black this? Friday weekend. Like I've never like since high school, I've like, oh, here's a great deal on Mo- Cyber Monday. Mm, all right, so I'll just focus on the weekend then. Uh, hopefully something nice will come around then. Um, but yeah, I, for like Thanksgiving, things might be a bit more normal for me like just uh probably gonna be like a grand old like a uh, cooking session that my sister's probably gonna do or something but yeah it's 
it's probably going to be like a, a big sort of like meal. It's going to be enjoyable. Uh, that's really it, really. Yep, I yeah, have two um, family thanks. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say I have two family Thanksgivings. One is the bigger family one which is going to be more traditional Thanksgiving. Everyone gets together and all that. And that's sort of why I got my COVID shot yesterday. Because, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be crowded and very, very crowded with lots of family, which is good, though. And then, which is more traditional thing, and then the more local family, mother, stepdad, and all that is more, it's like, oh, we're just going to have pizza and uh, Cincinnati chili and all that. <laughs> like, I'm fine with that. That's simple. <laughs> Uh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, like my yeah, well, Day Lover's family is in Denmark. My one side of the family is pretty well and truly out of state at this point. So only one th family Thanksgiving for us. But uh, hopefully, I think we're gonna make it count. It's actually everybody in that. Families like it's becoming everybody's favorite holiday by now, so I think they're real, they're going to go for it as per usual. And plus, but, uh, I guess show um, day lover this holiday because they don't really have Thanksgiving over in Denmark. Yeah. So it's like bonus holiday for her. Oh. But uh, I guess I might as well uh, extra start. food. Extra food. Mm, food. Mm, but I guess to close it out, I guess I can ask like everyone's um, for Thanksgiving. What's your favorite uh, main dish? Your favorite side and your favorite dessert. Mm. Mm. Ooh, favorite uh, main dish. Mm. That just might be the plain old turkey. I don't know if it. What even else counts as a main dish? Some people do turkey. Some do ha uh, honey baked ham. Ham is also sort of more Christmassy, but sort of like both. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some do the tur Just some like do the turducken. Is a little bothy, uh, but more Thanksgiving. Yeah, give me the turkey. Um, I'm a ham. I I like ham better than turkey, but if there but if turkey's there, I'll eat it. Just okay. I have to say, but I have to say, I do give preference a little more to the dark meat versus the the white meat because whenever I've had the white meat, it's always been kind of it's it's always been kind of like. Kind of dry, so I have to drench, drown it in gravy. No, yeah, I've heard people go back and forth on which one is healthier. That like, oh, the white meat is the like fat-free one, and the oh, the white meat is the one without any of the nutrition you need. It's the healthy fat and the dark meat. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. I'm gonna take the piece that looks good. Yes. Yeah. Favorite side item: mac and cheese, hands down. Boy. Maybe the croissants, but just because my grandma makes her own. Ooh, and the roll. Oh, you can't you can't have a Thanksgiving plate without rolls. Indeed. Like, what I, about will, some, like I will like what, run off with the tray. <laughs> what about some grab bags? I thought uh, that was more of a like Christmas or yeah, yeah, winter holiday thing. No, do you guys do Thanksgiving grab bags? No. We just, it's if we're, it's equivalent is like you, it, an equivalent of that is like the my mom or my stepmom shoving food shoving food in like uh and and, and like uh, uh containers and such and telling us to take it home with us. <laughs> yeah. There is that. I mean, we do a lot of like Christmas grab bags in my place, but uh, yeah, Thanksgiving, we do the planning for the grab bags or in this year, the white elephant gift giving, I think is what my mom's saying she wants to do. And uh, what was I going to say? But yeah, my favorite part, like of all Thanksgiving, though, favorite food period, I think I have to side with uh over the river and through through the woods, hurrah for the pumpkin pie. That is that should be the last line because nothing tops that. Give me a lot of whipped cream on there and a big piece. I like my pumpkin pie. Nice. 
nice, nice. Mm. I would, I All would, right. have, I would. Have Not said everybody something. understands the zealousness, but it's there. Mm. I can understand that. I would, some, if, there are some people who feel the same of a sweet potato pie. Yes, yeah, sweet potato. It's so weird. Like pumpkin pie is possibly my favorite pie, and sweet potato pie I finally decided I don't even really like. Something about it is just the wrong side of like using a yam in a dessert or a squash in a dessert, whatever it is. Like it, like it's like I don't it might know. just be uncanny valley with uh, pumpkin pie for you. It might be. It's just like a sweet potato, like. Like, the first time I had it, they just told me it was pumpkin pie, and I was like, whatever. And I was like, huh, well, this is a little different. But and then it's like, I don't know, a sweet potato tastes like it doesn't want to be sweet quite as much, weirdly. It's... Yeah, I would I say if you know. do sweet potatoes, the best the best thing is sweet potato casserole. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, like, the combination of the Uncanny Valley and just the... yeah inherent lukewarmness maybe i just wasn't meant to like sweet potatoes but oh well i'm known to be a little picky yeah wait but you can do apple pie too at any point in the winter apple pie is always a good standby good one Mm, i would have honestly said spaghetti but then recent events have kind of changed my opinion about that food Sounds like you guys have some fun offbeat approaches to these family traditions. Oh, yeah. Like when you do what? There's also, like, a favorite side. Like, my stepmom has this wonderful broccoli broccoli casserole that's so good. I've started to learn to like stuffing, but because we do have a few people who are, like, actually allergic to gluten, they don't just think it's the new fad diet, uh... They came up with this gluten-free version of stuffing that's Mm -hmm. basically just, like, yeah, gluten-free garlic bread cubes, which I keep sneaking some for myself because I do really like garlic bread. (laughs) Oh, garlic bread's delicious. Yeah, and these are just like, you know what, yeah, pour these all over my turkey or all over whatever you're suggesting. I have them with my mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. Although if you bring, like, actually, I'll put mashed potatoes on the best list if you bring, like, sour cream and bacon bits and chives for at least two of those things. Good. That's a good one, too, especially when you, and bring the gravy. Mm-hmm. Or the brown sauce, my Danish day lover here, who has fallen asleep on me, so shh. No, actually, I have headphones on, but yeah. They ah. eat a similar um. to gravy brown sauce, and they put it on their potatoes. And a lot of their other things, too. Their fregadelia, their, yeah, beef slices, their, I don't know, I was eating a lot of brown sauce when I was in Denmark. I don't remember whether there was variety or whether I was just eating it with a spoon, but there's brown sauce. Mm. Yummy. Sounds delicious. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Yeah. I do like it better than gravy. Hmm. Interesting. This one gives brown me, sauce. It almost sounds like it's gravy, but it's, I know it's different. Yeah, it's like maybe a little thicker and a little darker. Sounds good. But uh, for me, I would say my favorite main is turkey, but specifically fried turkey. I've had Ooh, it like once, and one. it was it fixed the problem with turkey. <laughs> um, yeah. It was moist and delicious. Mm-hmm. But in a more normal condition, I would say honey baked ham is better than regular turkey. Um, and then for a side, I would have to go stuffing, specifically stuffing with some turkey gravy on it. It's so good. And then for dessert, I would probably go with pecan pie. Where did you go on? With pumpkin mm. pie. Yep. With uh, okay. what, pumpkin pie is close second? with it. Yeah, I'd say pumpkin pie is closer to what I actually have done and actually probably will this year is I actually make a half pumpkin pie, half pecan pie, which I think I'll make again for the first time in a while. That sounds fun. I mean, like, yeah. there's hard, it's hard to find such a thing as a bad pie, but, yeah, heck, I just made my stance clear. Team pumpkin. Yeah, I think of pumpkin, though, is, like, there's... There's definitely quality levels of pumpkin pies. Um, 
like a very good homemade one or going from a proper bakery, that is good. Um, mm-hmm. But like a basic two dollar one, well, it's not two dollars anymore, but still like two dollar one from like Walmart or something like that. Like, yeah, that's not good. It's like the fake cheesecake that's like a no bake cheesecake. That's I I've, I used to enjoy that, but now I just I get anger that's not actual cheesecake. It's, yeah. Honestly, oh. for me, it's like, okay, uh, yeah, thick purgatory burger versus a fast food burger with, yeah, cheese and bacon and all of the above. I mean, one is clearly superior in quality, but I'm indulging myself either way. I really like pumpkin pie. <laughs> but, yeah, I understand that I'm not necessarily the rule on that one. Maybe not the exception either, but eh, middle grounds, am I right? Yeah, everybody's got their thing. Mm. And Funkin' Pie Twitter is... Just, okay. I was saying, Funkin' Pie definitely is popular, and also it's spinoff Pumpkin Spice, which... <laughs> uh, took over October forever. <laughs> like, yeah, well, but... Yeah, my issue with like pumpkin spice, I like pumpkin spice flavored stuff that is more of the spice, like the actual spices you mix in the pumpkin pie. That kind of pumpkin pie, uh, pumpkin spice is good, especially in baked things. But like I just like the start, the current Starbucks one, which is more about the pumpkin puree. It's like this, this ain't good. Pumpkin pie is supposed to be more cinnamon than pumpkin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boy, maybe so. I mean, pumpkin spice is good although in sweet things i don't eat a lot of savory pumpkin stuff i've had people shove one in my hands with the second one i put it in my mouth i was like okay maybe this round i should shut up eat and be like you win this time but still on the whole i don't go after savory pumpkin stuff i will say though i've actually ate pumpkin cooked before and like uh pumpkin made because it is a squash we don't often think of it, but, uh, um, but yeah, pumpkin is actually really good if you bake it right. Okay. Yeah, but it is like a, um, I kind of think, of, like a water squash or something like that, but like it has a very distinct pumpkin flavor to it still. But uh, I guess with that said, um, See y'all next time. See ya. Take care, everybody. Happy Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving and then on to Christmas season. Or as the memes say, thawing out, uh, what's her name, Carrie? Uh, One Christmas singer. Gotcha. Mariah Carey. Yeah, Mariah Carey. I, I do love that meme of like, her being thawed out and like as the beginning of the Christmas season. Oh. Mm-hmm. Or like how the one bar like put on and like no one can play um uh, Carey's like uh, Christmas until uh, X time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Oi. Yeah, that sounds about right. Oi. And thank so, goodness last Christmas doesn't show up outside of that time. That song is Death by Slow Drone to me. Mm, I've been worked in retail and heard every remix of it ever made three times oh, yeah, a day the, for a month. Yeah, I forgot about the retail struggle. I worked several Black Fridays, and yeah, there's... You like, yeah, I get way too familiar with the Christmas songs or the sort of generic ones they get the rights to. Um, but, yep, uh, I guess until uh, the holiday season, probably. See y'all. Mm-hmm. See ya.